Hello, Wasteland. All right. So, after doing the zip guns tutorial yesterday, well, I guess yesterday, it depends on when you see this video. Uh, after doing the zip guns tutorial, um, had a lot of positive feedback, so I thought I'd continue giving it a shot. And today, I'm going to show you these guys here. These are my first three cars that I ever made for Gaslands. Pretty simple builds. Just took some basic plastic card, had a little diamond plating hanging out. And then some Warhammer 40k bits, because in a past life I played Citadel games. Well, the beautiful thing about these cars is they were, that's right, a dollar a piece for the three pack. And I found those at Dollar Tree, not Dollar General or Dollar Mart or Family Dollar or anything else like that. I found them at Dollar Tree. So... I thought this would be a good opportunity to launch a series called Discount Demolition. And that's how to get into Gaslands on the absolute super cheap. So, the first thing I did when getting into this game was I went online and I looked up the cost of the rule book. And this was over Christmas. And I found that the Gaslands ebook was on sale on Amazon for something like two dollars for kindle so two dollars for kindle plus the cars which was a dollar at the dollar store were at three dollars and then leftover bits and plastic card that i had from just other wargaming hobbies and things of that nature and lo and behold it comes out to be i paid you know three dollars to get into this game because i'd already been a hobbier so that's awesome but there are a lot of guys out there, girls, people, who don't have all these resources and haven't been gaming forever, don't have all these tools and things of that nature. So, we're going to wipe the board clean. And we're going to talk about what does it take to get into Gaslands. Well, first thing you're going to need to get into Gaslands is a copy of the rules. Now, you can buy the rules for anywhere online for I think $12 on Amazon right now. So we're gonna go with, you know, $12, $12.50 round up, we'll call it 13 bucks. So you're at 13 bucks on Amazon for that. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about dollar stores and things of that nature. So the dollar store is your friend in this process. So the first thing you're gonna need is, you're gonna need a couple of cars. And you can go and you can get your average Hot Wheels car. You know, and go to the Dollar Tree and get you guys like this. Now, this is a Maisto Fresh Metal, and this guy in 164th scale is a Dodge Charger F21 and 69. So that's pretty cool, right there. So you can get your little fleet of classic cars going, and you know, you've got Matchbox, you got these Maisto or Maisto guys, I don't know how you pronounce it, I'm sure somebody will say so in the comments below, and of course you've got your good old-fashioned Hot Wheels, uh, you know, pick cars that you're into, but get you a couple, um, but the first thing you're going to do getting into this game is you're going to read the rule book and you're going to figure out what team you want, or however you want to do it, it doesn't really matter. And then what I want to, what I like to do is I suggest that everybody starts off with one of these guys. There's your basic three car pack. They come at Dollar Store, they come at Walmart, they come at Kmart, they come at Dollar General. I mean, you can literally find these three packs of cars anywhere. And they're good starter cars and they're good practice cars. There's a couple of reasons why. Let me show you. First of all, you get three cars for a dollar going to open these up right now. Three cars for a dollar, a couple of neat designs. They mimic classic cars to a degree, and they all look kind of wastelandy and pretty cool. Now, a couple of limitations with these cars. They're a little flimsy, a little cheap feeling, but they are metal, so you can definitely do the die-cast metal thing. 
on your first builds, you're not going to be doing stuff like drilling out rivets. And these cars, the Dollar General cars, are in fact riveted. So if you don't have a drill, you're not ready to get a drill yet, you know, bear that in mind. You're not going to be taking cars apart. But because these are plastic underbodies and kind of cheap, you don't really have to worry about that too much. Because you can get a hobby knife in there and cut out the windows and do all that stuff. And you can even cut around the posts on these plastic bodies if you want. These are not tough to do at all. You can simply make a cut right down here and right down here if you want to separate the body and pull the glass out and put screen in the back. That's totally an option. Okay? And we may do that in a future video. So you've got your three cars. Great. So armament. What are we going to use for arming them up? Well, I travel a lot. I travel an awful lot. I do it for work. So, sometimes you'll see me in a hotel room because I'm bored. And this is my hobby and this is what I do when I go. So, hotel key cards. Here's your armor plating. Super easy. Left over. The hotel doesn't care if you turn them back in and check in. Uh, occasionally, I'll go to a, with a client's top golf, top golf cart. Another great, great resource for a plastic card that nobody's going to look like. And of course, as I discussed in the zip gun video, we've got these guys here. So, that covers armor plating. And you can take, and there are lots of videos out there where you can take other fabrics and do that sort of thing. But if you do have access to a craft store and you are not totally destitute, your next option is, of course, this plastic grating. This is a great way to get started. It's easy to work with and simple enough to simple enough to process. Good stuff right here. So we're going to add this to our little Hilo discount demolition materials. All right. Next resource, toothpicks. Toothpicks are great. You can use them for all sorts of stuff. The most obvious being spikes. You, know, you can take a couple of these and make some spikes out of them. Pretty cool. Pretty cool right there. The other thing that you can use them with is you can use them in your little zip guns. And they make excellent machine gun barrels. So, put those aside. Put those on our list of materials that we can use to armor up and kit out these wasteland demolishers. All right. So, what else do we have available to us? Got some of my other favorites here. You want to build lifted suspensions. Coffee stirrers are your friend. These guys work great for lifting suspensions. We'll take that guy and put him over here too. And of course, can't forget paper clips. Paper clips are great for doing your Mad Max style lances and things of that nature. Now, I've got a couple of tricks here, and I can show you how to make a Mad Max style lance. And then also, I'll teach you guys how to make, in a future video, a uh, miniature RPG-7 style weapon. You remember the movie Death Race? He had those RPG-7s across the top of his truck. That was pretty cool. I think I'm probably going to do something like that when I do Let's Build Rutherford. Gonna do a Let's Build Rutherford video because I like it. Fun. Okay. Now, another thing that guys tend to overlook is you still got this. You got this packaging here. It's cardboard. Believe it or not, you can armor your cars with cardboard because once it gets painted, no one's gonna know the difference. There is also thin plastic in the window of this packaging right here. So, you know. You may use it, you may not, but it's an option. You need to think about it. When you're building on a budget, you're, it's all about thinking outside the box. Um, so, there's that. Now, there's a couple of other choices that you can get. And you've got one of my personal favorites, zip ties. I already made a video highlighting how you can make a machine gun feed out of zip ties. So that's pretty awesome right there. You can feed your machine guns using a zip tie ammo belt. Dudes love that. 
Okay. So the last other bit of material that I want to talk about, reaching into my bag of tricks, metal screening. You can do a ton of stuff with this. You can take metal screen like this and put it into the front windshield of your car. It's a great way to do it. Or the back windshield of your car. And also another cool option there. And it works out just awesome. Just plain awesome. So let's take a little bit of that over there too. Well, I'm going to put this back in the back. So it's in. Okay. So another thing is you can always find something interesting to do with one of these. It's a Starbucks coffee stopper thing, I guess. I don't really drink Starbucks. But, I mean, you can totally make a cool, weird, Michigan-looking weapon out of this guy. Absolutely, you can. Shape it up, glue a little wire to it, you know, bits and bops. So, those are just a couple of the basic materials that you can kind of work with to get started. Now, let's talk about the essential tools here for getting the job done because we've kind of covered the base materials. You've got cars, you've got plastic car, you've got zip ties, you know, you've got your coffee stirrers. I mean, you've got tons of great little sort of feeder parts to get going with, right? And the nice thing is, is that the majority of these things are either free or you've got them around your house already. Now let's talk about tools. Tools, tools, tools. Option A, and the preferred weapon of choice, uh -huh, in my opinion, is going to be, of course, the X-Acto knife with the number 11 blade on it. I love it. It does the job. It gets in there. It does 90% of the work I do. Another handy thing to have around, a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of Lyman's or flat pliers. I'm not really sure what those are. They're spring-assisted pliers. They're great. Uh, wire cutters or uh, plastic modeler's cutters. These are going to be super handy as well, and they will help you do the job, especially when it comes to clipping the little tabs that hold axles in place in terms of Hot Wheels cars and things of that nature. And I can kind of give you an example of what one of those looks like. Here's one of my slime builds. Okay, so if you look very closely inside of here, even tell if it's in focus. Are we in focus? You've got these little plastic tabs. Those little plastic tabs there, you kind of get in and cut those out because then the wheels will come free. And for those of you who don't know, cars come in three pieces. Just kind of stick it all back together. And boom, about your uncle. This is a rust patina that I force rusted on it using a technique that I picked up from another channel. I may discuss it in a future video. Okay, so we've got things with which to cut, and don't worry if you're literally running out of the dollar store, I have my dollar and variety store bag of tools here. We've got soldering iron. What you do is you take the soldering iron, you heat it up, be careful, and once you have your plates cut out, holding them with a pair of your pliers here, you just run this along the edge of the plastic card, and what that's going to do is it's going to give you a very melted appearance on some of your armor plating. It's going to look like they were cut with like an acetylene torch or something like that, and it's going to give you just this really cool effect. So there's that. If you don't have an X-Acto knife, basic box knife will get the job done. And of course, this is for you more crazy advanced guys who want to build your giga horse cars and stuff like that. A basic metal hacksaw will also serve you well in that regard. Now, uh, I haven't really played with this hacksaw or tested it yet, so when we get into doing a more advanced build on a budget in future episodes, we will start talking about using a hacksaw and cutting cars in half to make a gigahorse configuration. We might do that, 
with another pack of these little cars that I have and see what kind of monstrosity we can create. Cool. Okay. So, that kind of covers our tools. Now, once you've got your tools, you need some way to kind of hold all this crap together, right? So, we've got one of the obvious go-tos, the hot glue gun. This works great for some things and not good for other things. The hot glue gun will bind plastic to plastic and metal to plastic and metal to metal okay. Remember, it's thermoplastic, so it's not going to stick super, super well or super perfectly for super long. So anything that you use hot glue on, it needs to kind of be the right sort of part. So use your hot glue more sparingly. You're going to want something that's going to last a little bit longer. Which brings me to the two bread and butter <sighs> adhesives that you're going to use here in the wasteland. Gorilla Glue. This is a gel super glue, any gel super glue will do. And then of course, there's your bread, and what would it be without butter? Regular old super glue. Both of these available at the dollar store. They come in tiny little tubes, um, as well as larger tubes like this. I like the tiny single shot tubes because I always have the misfortune of uh, my super glue tubes getting stuck, gunked, or uh, just impossible to use after one use. So I usually go for the uh, the one-time use super glues. But this little guy came from Harbor Freight and let me see if it still works after I used it yesterday. It did not. Well, it did not. So, oh, well, how about that? Decided to uh, wake up after. So, yeah, these little Harbor Flight Super Glues are apparently usable enough after uh, after the fact. So, bully to Harbor Freight. And you can get a pack of a bunch of these for like a dollar at Harbor Freight. So, there you go. All right. Well, that about covers... Uh, this intro video materials and toys from the wasteland. So our next video, we'll get into uh, actually taking a look at one of these cars and building it. All right, wasteland. Easy.